you're going to get introduced to this video. I put them all on this one screen here. Let's start with the sum identities. So what this says is if you have two angles added together, and you're going to take the sine of those, so A would represent one angle, B would represent the second angle, then the sine of A plus B would be equal to the sine of A, sine of the first angle, times the cosine of the second angle, plus the cosine of the first times the sine of the second. And if we had cosine of one angle plus a second angle, first angle plus second angle, then that's the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first times the sine of the second. And same with tangent. If we have the tan of two angles added together, that's the tan of the first plus the tan of the second divided by one minus tan of the first angle times tan of the second angle. And then there's some identities for if you have, instead of two angles added together, two angles subtracted. So here's the sine of A minus B, or the sine of the first angle minus the second angle. And here's the identities for those. And then there's the double angle identities. This is if you have sine of twice an angle. So say your angle was uh, pi over 6, and you wanted to figure out what is the sine of 2 times pi over 6. Well, that would equal 2 times the sine of A times the cosine of A. So 2 times the sine of pi over 6 times the cosine of pi over 6. And if you have cosine of double an angle, that's cosine of the first angle squared minus sine of the first angle squared. And then there's an identity for tan of twice an angle as well. So these are some new identities here. And let's look at how we might use these to prove and work with some identities. So here, let's say we've got to write the sine of 35 degrees times the cosine of 21 degrees plus the cosine 35 degrees times the sine of 21 degrees as a single trig function. So if I'm looking at this here, this is looking like I've got sine of an angle here times the cosine of some different angle. And then I've got the cosine of this first angle, A, again, times the sine of the second angle, which was B. So I've got sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. And that's looking like this one. Sine A cos B plus cos A sine B is sine A plus B. So this is equal to sine of A plus B. So this big expression here is nothing different than the sine of A plus B. 35 degrees plus 21 degrees. And when I add those two together, that's the same thing as the sine of 56 degrees. So these are not difficult questions. It's a matter of looking at what you've got and going back and looking at your identity and figuring out which one it is. And then whatever A and B are, it's just a matter of adding those, those two together. Let's look at another example. So say we've got to write this one as a single trig function. So I've got cos angle A cos angle B plus sine angle A sine angle B. So I'm looking for cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So cos cos plus sine sine. Um, here we go. Cos A cos B plus sine A sine B is cos A minus B. So is cosine of A minus B. And my A is pi over 3, so this would be cosine of pi over 3 minus the second angle, which is pi over 2. So I've got some fraction work to do here. So these need common denominators of 6s, so times 2 times 2. times 3 times 3, and 2 pi over 6 minus 3 pi over 6 is minus 1 pi over 6. So I can write that expression as simply the cosine of negative pi over 6. And how about this one? we got to write this as a trig expression. 
So 1 minus 2 co squared 37 degrees. So 1 minus 2 co squared. So let's go back up here. It's none of these ones. Hmm. Now it doesn't look like there's anything here, does there? So I'm going to show you a little trick here with this identity right here. So we have cos 2a equals cos squared minus sine squared. Remember this identity? Sine squared or cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. Well, I should then be able to say then that if I bring... If I bring this over to this side, I get negative sine squared. And if I bring the 1 over to this side, I get minus 1. So this identity, if I move the sine squared to the right and move the 1 to the left, I get cos squared x minus 1 equals negative sine squared. So now in this identity, this one here, check this out. Whoop, not x, a. So I've got... Cos, this identity is cos 2a equals cos squared a minus sine squared a. So if I've got cos 2a equals cos squared minus sine squared, I'm not going to put minus sine squared in there. I'm going to put plus cos squared a minus 1, because I've just found out that negative sine squared x, or negative sine squared a, is the same thing as cos squared a minus 1. And so this would become 2 cos squared a minus 1. 1. So let's just write this identity down as well. Cos 2a, it could equal cos squared a minus sine squared a, or it could be 2 cos squared a minus 1, or if instead of replacing the sine squared a with this, with this if I replace cos, replace cos squared a with 1 minus sine squared, then the identity would look like this. So technically, there's three different identities for cos 2a. This one, this one, and this one. And these are just replacing either the cos squared or the sine squared using the Pythagorean identity to get them all in terms of one expression. So let's go back to that one. Remember, cos 2a is 2 cos squared a minus 1. So cos 2a is 2 cos squared a minus 1. Now this, this example I gave you is a tough one. So I don't have 2 cos squared a minus 1, uh, but it's close. I have 1 minus 2 cos squared a, or 37 degrees. So if I multiplied both sides of my identity by negative 1, multiply this by negative 1, multiply that by negative 1, so in a sense, I've changed all the signs. And I'm going to start with the positive here. So this would be plus 1 or 1 minus 2 cos squared a. I've created an identity that looks exactly what, what I was given in this tough question. 1 minus 2 cos squared a, or there's our angle, is equal to minus cos 2 times the a which is minus cosine of 74 degrees. So there it is written as a single trig function. So we can simplify trig expressions using our identities. If we were asked to simplify this one here, I've got sine 2x divided by 2 sine x. And going back up here, we got sine 2x, or sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a. So, this would be according to our identity, 2 sine, whoop, we got x's here, not a's. I want to use the same variable. So, sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x, divided by 2 sine x. Now, these can cancel. And so I've simplified this expression down to cosine x. Let's consider this example here. 2 cos x divided by 1 plus cos 2x. Well, the numerator is pretty simple. 2 cos x, nothing I can do there. 
but the denominator's got a cos 2x in it. And so we need to replace the cos 2x. I took the cos 2x identities, so remember we generated three of them. Cos 2x could equal this, or this, or this. And now we've got to decide which one to put in for cos 2x. Well, if I put this one in, this isn't going to help me. It's going to make this denominator pretty messy. Um, I mean, we could we could use this one, but we'd have to use another identity before we were able to tidy it up. What I would like to do is I'd like to get rid of this plus one here. So that's why I'm liking the second one here, because when I put this in here, so cos 2x is 2, cos squared x minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And so what happens to our denominator is it just tidies up to this, because 1 minus 1 is 0. And now the 2s would cancel out. One of these cosines would cancel with one of the squared. And so I'd just be left with 1 up top divided by cosine x. And 1 over cosine x is the same thing as secant x. So I've taken this very complicated trig uh, expression here and simplified it right down to secant x. In this final example here, say we are going to be asked to find the exact value of the secant of pi over 12. We don't have triangles that have exact values of pi over 12. We only have we don't have pi over 12, we have pi over 3 and pi over 6, remember from the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. We also have the 1, 1, root 2 triangle where this is pi over 4. So, yeah, we don't have a pi over 12. However, we could see that pi over 12 is the same thing as pi over 3 minus pi over 4. This is true because if we were to get common denominators here, timesing the top and bottom by 4, the numerator and denominator by 4 would give us 4 pi over 12, and multiplying numerator and denominator by 3 here would give 3 pi over 12, and of course 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 is 1 pi over 12. So I could write this as pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And that would be the same thing as pi over 12. And all we also know that secant theta is the same thing as 1 over cos theta. So I could write this as 1 over cosine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4, like so. Now we have, we have an identity for cosine of a minus b. I wrote it down here. Cos a minus b is cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So I could write this as 1 divided by cosine a, which is pi over 3, times cosine b, which is pi over 4, plus sine a, which is pi over 3, times the sine of b, which is pi over 4. And so now I have 1 divided by the cosine of pi over 3. So I've got my triangles here. That's 1 half adjacent over hypotenuse. So 1 half times cosine of pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2, plus the sine of pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2, times the sine of pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2, So now we would get 1 divided by 1 over 2 root 2, multiplying these fractions together, plus root 3 over 2 root 2, multiplying those fractions together. Now, conveniently, these have common denominators, so I would have 1 plus the square root of 3 divided by 2 root 2. And now remember when we have something divided by a fraction, 
That's the same thing as this multiplied by the reciprocal. And of course, 1 times this will just be 2 root 2 over 1 plus the square root of 3. So that would be the exact value for the secant of pi over 12. Secant of pi over 12. So those are um, some of the other identities and how we use them to work with trig expressions.